feminism. The staple in academic feminism today is what is called intersectionality. And that means the intersection of gender, race, and class, sometimes referred to as the Holy Trinity. Sometimes it can you know, expand it to sexuality, ageism, fat oppression, I don't know, whatever else you, you want to include. But it's identity politics, in other words. I think it's important to recognize that identity politics does not take into account systemic analysis. And that's why I think it's very ironic. Because capitalism has really, I mean, you know, you, you have capitalist triumphalism, right? I mean, Soviet Union's gone, China's gone, become capitalist, social movements, you know, are dead or in decline. And, in fact, there are, no, there are no social movements to speak of. And yet you have no analysis of capitalism. Instead, you just look at identity as intersecting. So it was so interesting because I think last year I was asked to write uh, just an encyclopedia entry on Asian American feminism. And so I, you know, I had to look at the old um, writings on Asian American feminism. And I came upon a phrase that I also used myself but sort of forgot, you know, um, in response to white feminists, feminists of color talk about their oppression as a triple oppression. And by that, they meant sexism, racism, and capitalism. It's very interesting because I myself had used that, but I just didn't even think of it this way. And I thought, hmm. Now you have the intersection of gender, race, and class, right? Gender, race, and class seems to recount triple oppression. But yet, if you look more closely, actually, it reverses and undercuts it. Because triple oppression refers to systems. You know, when you talk about sexism as a set of social relations, racism and capitalism, to talk about gender, race, and class is not quite the same thing. In fact, the other interesting thing to realize is when you say class in this holy trinity, class too has been reduced to just an identity. It's not labor capital relations by any means, right? All it is is, what's your lifestyle like? What kinds of things do you consume? What neighborhood do you live in? That's what class means today. It is, other word, in other words, a very conservative view of class that mystifies it. Okay, that's actually the word I wanna, want to use. The theory formation today that claims to be progressive actually serves to mystify social relations, which to me, if you're using a materialist view of the world, should be no surprise, because we're living in a, in a neoconservative period. And you would then expect theories that come out, you know, to be reflective of that conservatism, and it certainly does. In short, my concerns of three decades ago when Ida and Lulu and a bunch of other women were getting together to talk about how to articulate social relations of gender, how to articulate feminism, those concerns have been turned upside down. I would have welcomed 